So lithium iron phosphate batteries are the best option for RVs and off-grid solar power systems. They have the largest charge cycle life. They're a little bit heavier, but they're very safe and non-combustible. And not long ago, there were not many options on the market, but nowadays there are too many options and there are different features from each manufacturer and different warranties. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing the most popular lithium iron phosphate batteries. And so every battery in this comparison has very similar energy density. So we are not gonna be talking about the weight and we're not going to be talking about charge cycle life because it is very similar no matter which battery that we compare. So first we have Battleborn batteries, we have Renogy batteries, Relyon, Simplify Power, the Kilo Vault battery by Alta e Store, we have a Chinese eBay HHX lithium iron phosphate battery. We have my personal prismatic do-it-yourself battery from used batteries that have 90% capacity. We also have the Sinopoly do-it-yourself raw cell system if you don't have a BMS. And then we have the Sinopoly do-it-yourself cells with a high quality BMS. And then we also talk about different BMSs because a BMS can cost from $16 to $324. And I don't think people understand the difference. So now that we have that out of the way, we can talk about the technical aspects. So first we're going to do a price comparison of how much it costs per watt hour for these batteries. We're going to talk about the discharge rate and then we're going to talk about special features of each battery or what I think about each battery. But first let's talk about the Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. It's $949 and you get 1,280 watt hours. So if you calculate the price per watt hour, it's 74 cents. And then the highest discharge rate you have is 1C. And so what that means is if you have a 100 amp hour battery at 12 volts, if you discharge at a 1C rate, that means you can do 100 amps continuous. And this is a continuous. So you could also have a surge of like 150 to 200 amps and the Battleborn can handle it, but not for very long. But for continuous use, it can handle 100 amps. So that's the 1C discharge rating. And I would say that the Battleborn has a very good cost and discharge rate. It's right in the middle of all the other options. And so now that we have that out of the way, the technical aspects, we can talk about the features. So first, you can series connect them safely. And other batteries on the market, you cannot series connect. The Battleborn, you can series connect. Next, you cannot over torque the battery terminals. So if you look at most batteries on the market, you will have a bolt that goes into the battery for solar batteries. But this one doesn't have that. It has a big piece of metal and a hole through it. So you can put your own bolt on it and you, can, you can't over torque it, it will not damage it. And that's one of their selling points. Next, they talk a lot about temperature protection. Nowadays, most lithium iron phosphate batteries have low temperature cutoff. So I don't think it's a selling point anymore because it's so common, but they do mention it a lot and it does have a low temperature cutoff. And every single lithium iron phosphate battery on the market needs to have this. And it comes with a 10 year warranty, which is actually, I think the highest on my list. Nobody has a 10 year warranty. They're usually like one year to five year warranties. And the people at Battleborn will replace that battery if anything bad happens to it. So overall, the Battleborn is a great battery to start this comparison because it's a good battery. It's a good reference battery. Now the next battery is the Renogy and they make a 100 amp hour and 160 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And so for $900, you get 1,280 watt hours. And so if you divide it, you get 70 cents per watt hour. And then you get a 1C discharge rate, which is the same as the Battleborn. So now let's talk about the features of the Renogy. They are good batteries, but you cannot series connect them like a Battleborn, and that's really unfortunate. Also, a lot of people complained about them being dead on arrival last year. And a lot of people had problems with the bolt terminal and people were stripping it supposedly, but they fixed all of those problems and I haven't heard anybody complain about it. And then when they reposted it on Amazon, there have been only good reviews and I haven't had anybody email me saying any complaints. So I think the Ronigy is really good right now and it has all of the safety features and it has a five year warranty. And it's a little bit cheaper than the Battleborn. So it's a good battery now, but if you want to have a higher voltage system, the Renogy battery is not for you. If you want a cheap battery that works from a reputable seller with, with a long warranty, then the Renogy is a good idea. Now let's talk about Relyon. And I don't think a lot of people know about this company and they have the largest selection 
of lithium iron phosphate drop-in lead acid replacements. They also have special batteries for specific applications, including large systems that need to be waterproof, and they also have other ones for low temperature, and they're the only ones that have an internal heater that keeps the cells warm if it's too cold, and it's a drop-in replacement. And they were like the first ones to pioneer some of the safety features in these batteries. They've been around for a long time, and they're really good. So for $1,050, you get 1,280 watt hours. So the same size as the Renogy and the Battleborn that we're comparing. But if you divide that, that means it's 82 cents per watt hour. So it costs more and it has a 1C discharge rate. So it's the same as the Renogy and same as the Battleborn. But like I said, they have the largest selection. If you need a specific like battery box to be filled perfectly and you want it to be professional, they have the battery. I'm not sure if you can series connect them. I looked on every data sheet and it did not say so that's unfortunate I don't think that they really need that though because they have so many different batteries and different voltages and different sizes that you probably don't need to series connect it next you get a seven-year warranty with the Relyon so Relyon is good it costs a little bit more but it's a great battery and has lots of features the next battery is simply five power and I see these a lot and people always ask about them and I don't understand why they're so popular and I'm gonna get to that in a second but they're overpriced so check this out so for one thousand five hundred and forty five dollars you get one thousand three hundred and fifty two watt hours so that boils down to one dollar and fourteen cents per watt hour and the C rating is half or, or a little bit less than half of the Battleborn and the Renogy it's a, it's a C 2.5 rate and you only have a five-year warranty so you have limited discharge capability it's overpriced for the watt hour, but they look good and they're built in California. I really don't know. If you guys disagree with me, please tell me why Simply Five Power batteries are good. In my opinion, they don't seem good on paper, so that's kind of strange. Next one is Kilovolt, and this is made by the Alt E Store, and I really like this battery. So for $1,299, you get 1,800 watt hours. So that boils down to 72 cents per watt hour. So it's a little bit less than the Battleborn, and it has a 1.1 C discharge rate. So it's more than the Renogy and more than the Battleborn. And these batteries have all the safety protection features and they're great for large systems. And you can also have a max of four parallel strings and four in series batteries, but they only have a three year warranty. And the people building this have been around for a long time and they know what their customers want. It's a well-built system. If you're building a really large system and you have to series in parallel and you do not want to buy a single battery from like Relyon, the Kilo Vault is actually a really good option. Next battery is the Chinese eBay HHX lithium iron phosphate. So check this out. For $679, you get 1,280 watt hours, okay? And that boils down to only 53 cents per watt hour. It's really cheap. And the max discharge rate is one to two C. So that means that you can pull like 100 to 200 amps continuous from this thing. It has all the protection features, it has temperature and everything, but it only has a one year warranty and it looks super cheap. I really don't know how well these perform in the long run. I don't know what they're using inside. A lot of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, like the cells will work for like a really long time, but the BMS, like these little things that they put on it, they can be either really cheap or really expensive. And if you buy a Battleborn, it will last a long time. But if you buy these cheap Chinese ones, it might not last at all. I don't have enough information on this Chinese one, but at the cost per watt hour and the discharge rate and all the safety features, it looks really good on paper. Next, we have my prismatic cell do-it-yourself battery, and this is with used cells from eBay. So I spent $260 for 1,152 watt hours available because it's used I can only use 90% of the capacity so that's what I'm rating it for so that comes out to 22 cents per watt hour and because these are Sino poly cells the discharge rate is 3c so I can pull 300 amps from these cells also though it only has a 30-day warranty if the cells are bad so you have to test them on arrival and if they're bad you need to return the bad ones you should test them too you should test the internal resistance and the voltage and do a couple charge and discharge cycles next there are no protection features unless you build it yourself so that's why it's so cheap because it's like the raw cells and they're used so only 22 cents 
for watt hour, but it comes at a cost. And for me, I like to build my own BMS systems. It's very easy and simple to do. If you're not used to doing that, you should not attempt that. Next, we have the Ceno Poly Do It Yourself new raw cells. So if you bought the Ceno Poly cells themselves brand new from a distributor, it will cost $500 for 1,280 watt hours. So that boils down to 39 cents per watt hour and they have a max discharge rate of 3C and you have a one year warranty from the distributor. I could not find any information on Sino Poly's warranty on their website. They're a Chinese company. I could not find any warranty at all. Now the next one is a Sino Poly do it yourself but with a high quality BMS and I'm talking the best BMS on the market. This thing is over $300. So for $841, dollars you get 1200 watt hours and you get 70 cents per watt hour so it's actually a little bit cheaper than a battleborn and a Renogy. It's actually a really good price and you get really good cell monitoring and temperature features everything you could imagine with this thing it has a 3c discharge rate and a one year warranty. But the big drawback is that you have to build this thing. It can take only about one hour to build it, but a lot of people would not want to think about that. They would rather just buy a Battleborn and throw it in their vehicle or in their solar power system. This one though, really great stats for what you get. You do not get a good warranty though. Like with the Battleborn, you get 10 years. With the other ones, you get seven or five but this, you have a one year warranty just from the distributor in Sino Poly. Like I said, I can't find any information on their warranty. And let's talk about these do it yourself batteries real quick. You can buy this for $16. This is a BMS. It does not have temperature protection, but it balances the cells. It charges and discharges. It has short circuit protection features over voltage protection, all sorts of good stuff. All right. These are really good for most things, but they're cheaply made. And this is usually the weakest point in the system. If you spend, you know, $100 or $300 on a BMS for your custom built prismatic cell system, then you're going to have a really good system, but you need to factor that cost in as well. So if you build your own do it yourself system, you have to add in the cost of the BMS. And typically it will be comparable to a drop in lead acid by Renogy or Battleborn. So a lot of people I recommend not building them and just simply buying a Battleborn. It's probably the easiest way. It has the best warranty. You literally stick it in there and you don't have to really think about it. What's the difference between a $16 BMS and a $300 or a $200 BMS? Well, pretty much everything, all right? These things like to fail. A lot of people use these for e-bike batteries and I have seen multiple occasions on the forums of people saying that they failed on them, they burnt up, they stopped working. I mean, these are cheap, circuit boards built in China. You don't know where any of this stuff comes from. You don't know who soldered it. This one looks really well made and this one has really good reviews and I spent a little bit extra. Some people sell them for like $5. All right, this is a $16 one and it makes a huge difference. If this fails, you can fry your solar charge controller. You can damage your batteries if there's a short. There are so many problems that these can cause. So when you spend more money on a BMS and let's say you spend like $100 to $300, there is a huge difference. You can have Bluetooth connectivity and you can monitor everything. Sometimes they have shunts and you can see how many watt hours is going in and out of the battery. You can see the health of the battery over time. It will plot it on a graph. You can also change the parameters or extents and voltage reconnects for all of the protection features. You can change the extents for the temperature if you want it to disconnect at a different temperature. You can change everything and it works for years. Those things are designed to work for 20 to 30 or more years. <laughs> These are not. Okay, this is simply balancing, which is very simple. You just get this little chip to make these resistors give off heat sometimes. And then you make sure that it will charge at the right voltage at the right rate and stuff. And that's easy too. So the, these are dead simple. Everything on here, you can see what it does and where the power is going. So yeah, that's the main difference is pretty much everything. <laughs> that There's a reason why it's $16 compared to $300. There's a huge reason. And if you look at who makes the high quality BMS, there are companies that have been around for a long time and understand these systems and know how to make a good one but the more expensive ones you know what they are still pretty high in price considering the materials used and I think they're keeping the prices high because they've been around for a long time but I think that somebody's going to come out with a BMS that's cheaper that will blow everyone away like there should be a BMS that's $50 that does everything temperature bluetooth connection programming everything 
50 bucks. For the materials, absolutely. Now let's talk about the difference between a prismatic cell and a cylindrical cell. So there are lots of pros and cons to each. And if you have a cylindrical cell, typically if one fails, your whole battery will not fail. If your prismatic cell fails, if one of them fails, the whole battery will fail because the prismatic is so big and there's no redundancy. In a, in a cylindrical cell system, you can have each one fused and managed by a BMS. And if one of them fails, it's okay. The battery will keep going at a reduced voltage. So there's that benefit. But the real reason people use cylindrical cells for these lithium iron phosphate drop and lead acid replacements is they're fast and easy to manufacture and they're cheap. They are cheaper, okay? Prismatic cells are easier to use and they're boxy and I like them, they're really durable and they're great for do-it-yourself. Cylindrical are not good for do-it-yourself because you need to build your own like PCB that holds them and monitors each cell and tells you what's going on and actually takes care of it. And honestly though, for this application with solar and the C rates that we need for solar, especially with a large battery bank, both prismatic and cylindrical work great. I don't think there's that big of a difference and the price difference isn't that big either. So I would just use whatever you have available. They're both great options. Typically the reason that you choose one or the other is if you're a manufacturer and you're making a specific battery. That's when it matters. And also the cylindrical cells, there are more options available on the market. I keep seeing a lot of battery builders building with them. They're good. I don't want to mess with the PCBs. I love the prismatic ones because I can wrap it with electrical tape and it's durable. It comes with its own case. Cylindrical cells do not come with its own case. You need to build a battery system around it. And you can do that. It's not that hard. It's just an extra step. And then you have to fuse each cell. You have to get a spot welder. I just don't want to do that. I like prismatic because I can just throw some bus bars on there with electrical tape and it works great. And with the C ratings that I use for solar, a prismatic cell will last for a very, very long time. And I, I highly doubt that any of the prismatic cells are going to fail for solar use. If you're using them in a car, and I have some friends here that use them in electrical cars, they do go out of balance and they can fail because of the application. High discharge situations, they are putting them at the peak that they can handle. And so under those circumstances, yes, they will fail. For solar, absolutely not. And so for solar, prismatic or cylindrical, it really doesn't matter. You can use either one and you'll be happy. And I think for now, we have actually really good options for lithium iron phosphate batteries. We have lots of different sizes, different voltages, different BMS systems, but I really really want to see someone come out with a cheap BMS. I keep seeing Kickstarters for them, Electro Docus or something like that. I don't know their channel name, but he came out with his own BMS charging system that works with solar. And it looks really great on paper, but some people complained about different issues that they're having with it, with the input terminals and stuff. So I want somebody to make a box that's dedicated. That <laughs> I should probably be building that, honestly, but there's so many people doing it right now that I'm sure they're gonna do it anyways. That's such a bad excuse. But yeah, I would love to see a $50 BMS so we can use cylindrical cells, prismatic cells. We can build whatever battery we want instantly with one BMS. That would be great. And another thing I should mention is a lot of people are like, oh, this battery is made in the United States. Like Battleborn is assembled here or Renogy is shipped here and distributed out. But guess what? They are all coming from the same factory overseas. That's why they don't tell you what cells everyone's using. Okay, so if they have cylindrical cells and it's a drop in lead acid replacement, there's only a couple companies that make lithium iron phosphate cells. So it's not special, okay? There's nothing super special about any of these batteries. And it's the same with solar panels. You know, most of the solar cells are made in Southeast Asia, and then some are made in China and Japan, all right? There's a couple manufacturers in America, but most of them come from Southeast Asia. And some people will be like, oh, Renogy, they're made in USA, right? And it's like, yeah, but all the cells come from Southeast Asia, and the efficiency on those is great. They work really well for 20 years. And so I, I hate when people say made in America. America, but all the cells for the solar cells and all of the battery cells come from Asia. So yeah, most of these products actually come from only a couple factories. It's just that they brand them differently and they put their own BMS. And because the BMS is the weakest link, I mean, have you guys noticed that the Battleborn and the Renogy and like half the other batteries have the same C rates? It's because they're using similar cells. But the weak link is the BMS. And that's why having a good warranty matters a lot when you buy drop in lead acid replacement because the warranty protects the cells and the BMS and everything around it. It actually matters a lot in this situation. 
So yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful. I think I touched on a lot of good topics. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I probably missed a couple things. There's a lot to cover here. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.